Tom, you should tell Eric about our, not only the ditties, but the themes idea. So during the pandemic, we came up with a way to collaborate online. We found a method where we were able to actually record and release six songs during the pandemic. We ended up doing that using open source tools like Ardor, Ubuntu Studio as our operating system, and GitHub to share and collaborate on the files. Because of this, we were even able to talk while the other person was recording and we'd be able to make comments on what they played and what they recorded. So the video chat, actually became kind of like the booth that the person would be in recording in a studio. We would be on one side listening, they would be doing their take, and then we would comment on what we liked and didn't like or what they could do differently, and then they would re-record it. And we had these all cataloged on our own sort of wiki page that we created using Google Pages. We had so many song ideas, just snippets, ideas of songs, things that we could work on later that were left over and turned them into, we called them ditties. And what if we turned them into like a loop library? And that's really how it all started. Recently where we were listening to, I've been editing it, but uh, we were listening to the previous song that we just released. I had the soundtrack Night on Earth um, on the other night. I was listening to it and it's uh, Tom Waits did the soundtrack for Night oh, on yeah. Earth, the Jim yeah. Jarmusch yeah. movie. And he does all, he just does different variations on the theme. And oh, I thought like, what if we purpose, because the whole point of us making the ditties right now is it's like record every idea instead of like, oh no, we'll release it when this finally becomes a finished song that we're going to do. It's like, let's create a library of things doing the same thing going, well, what if we played it this way? So I, I did that and like in one night, I did like two different songs. And one I, idea that we had like, was uh, based on something that I was showing them during a Facebook video chat that we are doing in our private group. The basic structure is pretty simple, but the way I want to play it, I haven't decided yet. All right. It starts on an A and just goes down. Goes down to E. And then the chords are, it goes back and forth on an A chord. Right? But then, it also switched. As much as we were able to still communicate and collaborate and write music during the pandemic over these video chats. Oh, now Rob left. We're all familiar with the problems that they had. What the hell happened? But there's one thing that kind of held over while we were doing this. When we were able to get back together, we liked the idea in the just the whole creativity of the live streaming format. The fact that even though if nobody's watching, we know it's being recorded. So we kind of got to be on our best so, even though it didn't to go with the try and come up with something. It couldn't just be like, oh, I'll figure something out later. We were doing it and it was being recorded. So we thought it might be cool to try and do some live songwriting. So we started doing that on our Twitch channel. Mess with some stuff. So keep your beat steady because I'm going to mess up. And we began trying to just come up with ideas for things we wanted to do as songs. And the original setup we had was really just a rough setup. It was through a webcam attached to the laptop that was connected to our sound card that we had, which at the time was only a two channel sound card. And again, I was watching some of our old songwriting ideas that we had on our Facebook private group. This particular song was one I wanted to try out live because this was also the first song that sparked the idea for creating our loop library idea. After that session, I laid down that keyboard track and backed it up on our GitHub session so we could all kind of work with it. And the first thing that happened was Cliff wrote a bass line for it. So I started taking different sections of that and turning it into a couple of loops. The whole idea, a lot of them are supposed to be kind of 
quick little snippets or yeah. something, right? Yeah. yeah, and so we had been doing these little ditties, which you've right. heard, I knew you've that. heard some of over the over the time, like. But so this one was the first one where we like did it, and then there are now four variations, or well, three variations in one main. And the first okay. one is slippery friction. Was just the name of it. I like that. Yeah. Slippery friction. Yeah, it's a name that Rob came up with. There, there is a B part, but it's not. There. I, I, I really, really cool. I'm really loving this idea. Of this I like well. the I like the instrumentation of that too. It's yeah. got just a great feel to it. But it but it actually but it's it means more because of the other one. But I love that how like you hear little foreshadowings of, of a melody or something, and then you come back to it later, and it already is familiar to you because you've heard it before. But it's yeah. different. But, but you're like, why do I know this? I think I told you guys, like, one of the first times I really noticed that was when I would do sound from a band that I've never heard before. But I do their sound check and they do a song, or maybe they do two songs. Fast forward five hours later when the show's going on and they play that song, I fucking know it and instantly I'm like, oh my God, yeah, there's something about it, it triggers something. And because of that memory, and even though it was like, even though I was a part of that, and, it's... And it was just that one time, too. Yeah. I think that goes back to the how the human brain wants to find patterns, right? Yes. So as soon as you pick up on something that's a familiar that you can categorize into something, nope. that you can organize it in some way, it's a pattern, all of a sudden you're, you get more keyed in on it. That's, that's an interesting insight, though. Like, you had that as a sound guy. You yeah. had that weird sensation. And we continue to do the live streams of our songwriting sessions on our Twitch channel. But what started out as loops, because we were all in the same room again and able to collaborate together as a team, as a group, as a band, really started to be the beginning of expanding into something more.